Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will take a look at how to use the Avada content boxes element. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. Ok, let's begin. The content boxes element is one of the more option rich elements in Avada and as such is incredibly flexible. This element can be used in a wide variety of ways, but for this video we're going to look at an example of the content boxes element on the Avada Classic Prebuilt. On the Our History page, we can see this company history at the bottom here. This is using the content boxes element and the timeline vertical layout, which is one of eight possible layouts for this element. The content boxes element is a parent and child element, and so you can see when I edit it that it has a children tab where you both create and configure the child items, a general tab which configures the element as a whole, and a design tab which styles the element as a whole. The individual items themselves also have a general tab and an animation tab. There are a lot of options with this element, so let's go through them. I'll start with the parent general tab and see how this has been configured for this page. The first option is the box layout. Here, as I mentioned, it is using timeline vertical, but you can choose from eight different layouts as you can see here. The layouts affect the look of the content boxes considerably. Let's just go through them quickly to see the layouts. The layouts are Classic Icon with Title, Classic Icon on Top, Classic Icon on Side, Classic Icon Boxed, Clean Layout Vertical, Clean Layout Horizontal, Timeline Horizontal, and the layout chosen here, Timeline Vertical. Obviously your page layout and content will influence your choice of box layouts here. But once you've decided on that, you usually need to decide how many columns you want the content boxes to display in across your page column. With this layout, it doesn't offer you that choice, as one is the only logical selection with a vertical timeline, but with all the other layouts you can choose from 1 to 6. Just as an example, I'll change the layout to Classic Icon Boxed, and now you can see the Number of Columns option. I'll just change the Number of Columns to 2, so now there are two content boxes across the row and new rows are created to show the remaining children. The next option is Alignment. With content the same height, this isn't going to do much, but if I add some more lorem ipsum into one of these boxes, we will be able to see what the option does. By default, it's set to Flex Start. Here, I could set it to Center, Flex End, or set it to Stretch. OK, let's remove that extra text and set it back to Timeline Vertical. Following this comes three link-related options. The first of these is Link Type. In the individual child items, there is an option for a link, and this Parent option controls the type of link. You can choose from Text, Button Bar, or Button. The default is set to Text here, but there are no links in this instance of the element anyway. If I just change it to Button, we see an option appear for the Button Span, where you can set the Button Span to Yes or No. The default here is No. When we get to the child options, we will see this option in action. The next option is Link Area. This controls whether the entire content box is linked, or just the link plus the icon. And following this is the Link Target option, where you can choose whether the link opens in the same tab or in a new tab. Content Alignment is the next option, and this controls whether the content of the box is aligned to the left or the right. Here we can see it's aligned to the left. Finally comes the usual visibility option, which allows you to choose whether to display the element on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID fields, which can be used for further CSS customization. OK, let's move to the Design tab. The first option here is Title Size. This is pretty self-explanatory, and here it is set to 25 pixels. The titles themselves are added in the child items. You can also specify the heading size here, which you might want to do for SEO or accessibility reasons. Here, as we can see, it's a H3, but you can choose any heading, plus div or P. You can adjust the title font color in the next option, and as this value is empty, it means it's pulling the default value, which is set in this prebuilt to color 8. The body font color is also set to color 8, just with a bit of an alpha adjustment applied. The content box background color is the next option, and here it is set to color 1. This, of course, is the box in content box, and it can, of course, be any color, including any level of transparency. 
The color can be set here in the parent options and also in the individual boxes through the child options. Border radius comes next and here you can apply a border radius to the corners of the content boxes independently. This could be used to great effect. Box shadow is the next option and if enabled you get the usual five extra options with which to configure the box shadow. The next option is the icon and remember here this is a global option which would give all the content boxes the same icon. In this instance of the element this has been left unselected and all the icons have been chosen individually in the child items. Then there are a whole slew of global icon options starting with flip icon, rotate icon and spinning icon all of which are set to none or no. Icon color follows this which in this case is using the default of color 1 and icon background is on default which in this case is set to yes. This brings with it six dependent options. The first of these is an option called icon background radius. Having no value here it's using the default value for this which is 50% and which gives a circular background. This can also be set in pixels to a specific value. Zero pixels for example would give a square box while 10 pixels would give slightly rounded edges. Under this is the icon background color which of course is the color behind the icon less the inner and outer border and again here it's using the default of color 4. Then there are four options controlling the size and color of the inner and outer borders. With this range of icon options you can create some very unique icon areas indeed. For example if I just adjust the icon background radius to 10 pixels and change the inner border to 10 pixels and to color 5 and change the outer border to 5 pixels and to color 5 with a luminance adjustment of minus 15 we can see a very different effect. Again I'll just reset this this time using the history states. Following this are yet a few more icon options. The icon size is set to 24 pixels but this can be anything from 5 to 250 pixels. Icon hover animation type is the next option and this is currently set to the default of fade. The other options are none, slide and pulsate which gives a very cool icon effect. The next option is hover accent color which just affects the icon background color and not the inner or outer borders. If you prefer not to use a font awesome icon the next option gives you the choice to add an icon image instead. This field is of course also available in the individual child items if you want to control them independently and it's important to remember that any child item option will override parent options. The last icon related option here is the icon image max width which limits how large your icon image displays regardless of its native size. There is also a margin option which is applied to the element as a whole not the individual boxes and an item margin option which adjusts the margins between the individual items. Okay that was a lot of configuration options but we are not quite done. Now there are the actual child items. As you can see here it is the usual parent and child option panel where you can add new content boxes by clicking the add content box button or by cloning existing boxes. Let's edit one to see the options for each item. These options control the content of each individual content box. It starts with the title option. Then comes the content box background color. In this way you can have differently colored individual content boxes. Likewise there are all the icon and icon image options which all override parent options if used. Following this comes the read more link URL. I'll just add a dummy link here and two more options appear. Read more link text and read more link target. And now we can see the button that we selected in the parent options as the link type. Finally the last option here is the content box contents which can be populated with whatever content you wish including further Avada Builder elements by using the Avada Builder element generator. Each child item also has an animation tab if you want individual animations for each content box. Okay that's about it. As you can see with the multitude of layout and other options there are vast design possibilities with this amazing element. Okay that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos and if you have any questions or need assistance please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always we want to thank you for choosing Avada.